What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Carson's IH Garage. It's a wet, windy day outside today, so I'm in the shop. And right now I have the front drive shaft pulled out of the Scout. This is the drive shaft that runs from the transfer case to the front axle, and that's what puts the power to the front axle, giving you the four-wheel drive that the Scout was known for. Um, the U-joint is bad on it. The little bearing caps here um, that have little needle bearings inside. I'll give you a closer look uh, a little later. But these wear out, and as they wear out, the clearances um, inside uh, where they ride on the U-joint itself expand, thus making it very loose. And when it's turning at speed and it's slopping all around, it creates a pretty nasty vibration um, if they're not replaced or even properly maintained if they, um, if they aren't greased as when they were put in or when they were new. So today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the old U-joint, how to match up a new one that you could easily get from... Uh, any name brand store, something like Napa, AutoZone, or Advanced Auto Parts, and then I'll show you how to install it, probably take care of it, reinstall it, and also paint the drive shaft, clean up the splines, and um, inspect for any damage on the yoke or the shaft itself. So let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, I have my front drive shaft uh, in my vise, and the only reason I have it like this is so I can hold it for when I knock this U-joint out. So here is that bearing cap, and it's got all these little needle bearings inside of it. And what those needle bearings do is they act just like a ball bearing, where they all ride on the inside, and they all spin inside this cap. And this little cap usually has a hole in the middle, like that. And it also has a fitting for grease uh, somewhere on here, uh, or at least some of them do. Some caps do not have a fitting for grease. But per personally, I like to use the ones that are greasable, so you can make sure it's always got a good coating. Um, and it's just one of those things that you could do with maintenance. And even if it doesn't have the fittings, um, you could always pull a cap off, pack it a little grease, and push it back on there. So it'll force any grease that's already inside the joint out to all the caps. So what I did last night was I just pulled this out. I popped the caps off because it's junk. Um, and I'm going to show you a method on how to press these out. But first... There are these little clips that sit right in there in those little grooves and you have to just take a screwdriver or something with a little hammer um, and you have to just pop those clips off because what we're going to do is we're going to slide this whole U-joint down to one side, pull the cap out with some pliers and then continue tapping it until it kind of bottoms out here and then we'll just be kind of be able to, to pull it out of there just by sinking one end down and pulling the top out and you might have to remove the cap too. You should never reuse old U-joints um, if you're going to take them out because once you've tapped on them, um, they're kind of junk and you kind of you could possibly mess up the needle bearing. So it's not recommended that you reuse them, but if you absolutely have to, then that's okay. So I'm going to show you how to take it off now. So most auto parts stores, um, I know AutoZone does this where you can rent the tool to, it's like a little, almost like, it looks like a pulley puller that you would like, pull a, a balancer off of a crankshaft on your engine. It's similar to that, or like a ball joint press where it just pushes that out to one side so you can remove the cap just like we're gonna do. But if you don't wanna lay down a $40 deposit, I don't blame you, it's kind of a lot of money just to press out one little U-joint. So if you get yourself a socket that's the same size as that, or a little bit smaller would be better, that sits right on the cap, um, and you don't mind destroying it when you tap it with a hammer, although I've never destroyed a, shock, a socket while doing this. This is just a cheapy one. Um, but as long as you have enough to hold it there and you can hit it with a hammer, then you could knock that out. And sometimes you have to go to the extreme where you even have to cut the U-joint in half to get part of it out. I've had to do that before on the rear one where it was just seized in there. Um, but what I did last night was I soaked it in PV Blaster to hopefully get down in there in those caps, lubricate them a little bit because there's a little bit of a gap there where it could have seeped in and help me out a little bit in pressing it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit you guys up and I'm gonna start pounding this out. Um, and I just wanna get it to the point where this kind of bottoms out on this edge here and it's just enough to pull that cap out. And usually I have to use a pair of vice grips. Sometimes you can get away with channel locks just to yank it out and then you'll keep tapping it through and pull it out on the other side. So I'll show you guys.
So I don't think I've ever had this happen to me. So it's a good streak of luck. What I was doing is hammering on it, and the end cap fell off just like that. So all I got to do, like I said, is try and rotate it to where you can get this cap out. Let me see if I can do it. All right. So you got to just kind of find the sweet spot where you can yank that cap off. Or what you could do is you could try and rotate it. Oh, there we go. Haha, <laughs> look at that. And then part of it has to come out. These are always tricky. It's never too much to do. Get out of there. Come on. Alright. Of course, this thing's got to be a pain, right? <laughs> like I said before, you might have to cut them. Oh, there we go. Ha ha. All right, sorry you guys had to struggle through that. So there's actually the grease fitting there, and that's what I'd like to do, is I'd like to, to get the same thing. But this is all full of grease here. You could tell it was leaking, because um, no U-joint should have that much leakage. I mean, that's, that's pretty serious. Um, and that's just a sign of uh, the little rubber kind of grommets that are on there. Um, they always wear out. And they start to leak the grease, and the grease gets all over your hands. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some time to clean it up with a wire brush, grind down this ugly weld, just to make it a little bit nicer. I don't want to take any structure out of it, because somebody broke this at one point. And then um, I'm going to shoot it black, I think, just to make it look clean. And I'm going to start to measure for that U-joint, and I'll show you guys how to get them. So I'm going to clean this up. Get it ready for paint, and we'll start looking for U-joints. So when looking for a U-joint for your Scout, the thing I could recommend to you that works best for me is to do a quick Google search for Scout 800 front U-joint or whatever uh, part of the vehicle that the U-joint is belonging to, as well as your model number, and you'll come up with all these results here, and these likely will fit. I wouldn't buy anything from AutoZone there, uh, just because I've had bad luck with it in the past. I, even though it says it'll fit, um, I always like to go with a Scout Parts retailer. So if you can see here, there's this one on, on eBay here, uh, and this one is actually from ClassicScoutParts.com. I've uh, had products from them in the past, and they've always fit well, and they've always worked great. They're very nice quality pieces. Uh, so I'm actually going to go hop over to their website now and order it from there. So there you go. There's the U-joint we need, and I scrolled past the um, the U-bolts there to hold the, the U-joint in, but I recommend getting those too. It's not a bad idea to replace those as well. And here's the joint. It's 19 bucks, which is cheaper than any of the other competitors. And it's always a good idea to call and make sure that the joint is going to fit. Tell them your application. Tell them what you're looking for, and they'll match you up with what you need. So that's my advice to you. All right, so I got the uh, drive shaft. Uh, cleaned up, ground down that well a little bit. Didn't really want to touch it, but I just knocked off some of the little slag bits. Uh, clean it up with that brass brush on the, on the wire wheel there. Clean the splines, clean the U joint there. Not going for anything perfect. Just wanted to knock the grease off again. Uh, if you saw my my video where I put in my axle shafts, so I've been using that same paint there. Um, and all we're gonna do is give this a coat, um, and then I'm gonna go I'm gonna go paint this. All right, guys, it's been a few days. I ordered my U-joint and I received it from ClassicScoutParts.com and they're also kind enough to send me some new U-bolts. This is what holds the U-joint caps into the yoke of the uh, of the differential. So I got my drive shaft all painted up so now I'm going to bring you guys a little closer and I'm going to show you how to properly install it. So one tip when you're installing it, have a towel protecting your drive shaft, lean it on another flat surface and kind of give it a nice snug down in a vise. That way there, when you're moving around on it and you're kind of tapping on it, it's not going to move all over the place. And also move it sideways, horizontal like this. So when you take off your needle bearing caps, the needle bearings don't fall out if it was the other way around. So I'm going to unbox my joint here. And then I'll take one cap off and I'll show you guys how to slide it in and then press them together. Okay, I got my U-joint here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off this cap and I'm going to swing the end with no cap on it 
inside and that'll go far enough to allow me to start putting in that other side. So once I get this one kind of started by hand, that's when I could slide this other cap that I've taken off back in there and we'll squeeze it together with a clamp and a socket and it'll work really well versus having to go borrow or buy a tool. So I'll show you guys that really quickly. Okay, so because it doesn't matter um, which side I use, because all the caps are the same size and same length and everything like that, I can just pick a cap to pull off. So what I like to do is I like to spin it, get the grease that's in there distributed, and then bring it up like that, and then detach the cap slowly, and just put the cap off to the side. I don't want to hold on to it. So now I'm going to slide this side in far enough, like I said, and I can go ahead and get this side started by hand and then bring this cap back in, slowly installing it like that. And now what I like to do is I like to take my cloth here, put it over and then start tapping it with just like a ball peen hammer or something. And that's just gonna bring it in a little bit. And make sure you hammer on it square. Yeah, that looks good. And now you're just gonna start hammering it so the other side gets installed. And it's beginning to uh, come through here. So you just wanna keep working at it. So I have this side to the point here where it's flush, but it's not near the end on that side. And so that's where you wanna stop hammering on it. Now is when you take your vise, open up the jaws and you find a socket that fits in that middle um, groove and a socket you don't care about and you're gonna use it like a press to finish pressing in the U-joint until it's straight. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is take one of your included spring clips. Uh, this is an internal clip uh, and you wanna go ahead and take that and put that on kinda of as a, a stop uh, for when you're pressing in the U-joint with the socket so you know how far to go because it'll stop automatically. So you just clip that on and then I'll show you guys how to do the socket method. Okay, so back in the vise, I got my little spring clip on and this is the side it needs to be pounded in. So now what I have is a 916 socket uh, and I'm gonna just use my hammer and I'm gonna hammer down on it until this spring clip touches there. So it's pretty easy to do, so I'm gonna do it real quickly. Um, and then we'll slide the other clip on and that completes the installation of the U-joint. It's really easy to do and it's actually fairly gentle. Um, and I prefer it over really any other method. So it came up pretty good, it's nice and centered, the clips are in, uh, everything spins freely. If it doesn't, my advice to you is find like a shorty socket, like there, uh, and put it in the vise and press it to flatten out those caps in case they got a little cocked in there in the, in the housing here. But it should be able to do that, it should be able to hit it like that, so it's goes really easy and one thing I like to do is I like to pull off a cap throw a little bit of grease in it and then press it back on because it'll force any um, all the grease that's inside the u-joint the out to all the caps so it's pre lubricated uh, for when you put it on so that's just my tip to you so now I'm gonna move under the vehicle and install it okay so I got my drive shaft uh, next to me I put a little grease on the splines um, and that's just to give it a little bit of lubrication because the drive shaft does slide in and out uh, of the housing there as your suspension flexes. And usually there is a grease fitting on there, but it is rather hard to access. So, yeah. And this U joint is still good, it doesn't vibrate at all. And I think it, from looking at it up close, it's been replaced. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide the drive shaft in and then we'll clean up the yoke there and I'll slide my U-bolts in and I'll show you guys how to do that too.
So, I hope you guys enjoyed this little how-to video. And I'll see you next time, hopefully in a more comfortable position. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed. See you later.